Okay, traders, welcome to this week's weekly live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. I um, just want to do a quick audio test, if you can hear me loud and clear, a Y in the chat box, and if you can see the tick mail welcome screen also, a Y, so I know we can, uh, we can get going here. So um, before we do jump into today's discussion, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Um, most importantly for uh, today's uh, chat, uh, the views expressed by me and uh, the opinions today are solely mine. They are not representative of or indicative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Um, also, as we get into the charts today, I'm going to walk through a bunch of charts that I, where I see potential opportunities developing and uh, give you my overview on those. Uh, if you have any questions, if you could note those down and hold them till the end, I'll open up Q&A section. If there's a chart you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered uh, through my deck, then um, feel free to, to put that in or I can unmute your mic if you have any other type of question. So. Uh, for those who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. And after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup. This was post a merger in late 2004. So I then moved on to explore my passion for markets, with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling, the S&P 500. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what were essentially uh, significant losing positions, giving back all the gains and ultimately experiencing a serious six figure hit to my personal financial capital. Uh, to say this was gut-wrenching and every experience is an understatement. I had to really um, stand back from the markets and figure out uh, if it was feasible for, uh, for me to make a, a living from trading the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, uh, I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a strategy that suits my personality, extensively back and forward testing the strategy and developing a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. But more importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was moving from being a goal oriented individual who was focused on financial gains to being a purely process oriented individual. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even the string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered positive annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. You can see the trading data uh, for that service on the screen at the moment. I'm actually currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Um, since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've also consulted to uh, brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert 
at Tickmill, providing daily market analysis and trade analysis. You can actually register through their blog and you can get these updates sent to your inbox on a daily basis. My other, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talents at FX Career Swap. We don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those that are interested, you can see on the screen a number for the desk in London, or if you would like to email the guys and uh, request any information, they'll uh, be sure to get back to you um, with that information. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Um, now what I want to do is jump into the charts, I've got a bunch to, uh, to go through today, so let's, uh, let's get going. Uh, so we're going to start here with the S&P 500. We, uh, I was talking in previous sessions about watching this 3930 area. We saw a decent reaction from that 3930, got down to the 3800 level. Um, what I'm looking for now is another new high in terms of these, uh, these S&Ps and we'll just draw in uh, where I see the uh, next opportunity. So consolidating at the moment, it, one of two ways I think we go, we either head straight up into this uh, resistance zone now where we have this uh, projected ascending trend line resistance, top side of maybe a, an ending diagonal. And we also have the um, monthly R3 and weekly R3 coming in at 40.30. So if we head, if, if from this current low at 38.16, we, uh, if we squeeze higher here, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns as we test into this 40-30 area, looking for another pullback, uh, certainly back down into ascending trend line support, and maybe even a little bit deeper this time uh, for a test back down into the uh, 3700 area. The alternative scenario is that we hold current levels and, um, one second, let's just start this again. So we hold the current low here, we hold the current high potential double top, and we pull back down into this 3800 again for another test of this major trend line support. If that's the root of, of the price, then what I'll be watching for are bullish reversal patterns in this area to set long positions targeting this 4030 area. So the two key areas really of interest to me at, mo at the moment are the 4035 area and the support back down at 3790. So I'll be watching either one of those areas to as potential opportunities um, to trade from the long or the short side. Now let's jump, have a quick look at the Dow. So the Dow is actually trading up into its uh, trend line. We're seeing a little bit of a pause here at the moment this morning in terms of price. We have this ascending trend line resistance at the 32,100 level. We have the weekly and monthly R3s just above 32,184 and 32,324. So bearish reversal patterns in this area looking for short positions to target a move down into, uh, to retest 30,750 as support. And if we take out that area, then what I'd be looking for is a move into uh, the trend line support back down to 30,300 before again, watching for bullish reversal patterns as uh, an opportunity to set long positions for, uh, for the next leg to the upside. So again, two key areas, or well, three key areas to be watching in terms of the Dow. The DAX, <coughs> the DAX is uh, still consolidating highs. What I think we'll see now with the DAX at this, uh, at this stage is a, a move into um, this ascending trend line support. Let's see if we can move that. So if we hold the current support, what I'd anticipate we see is a move up into here, uh, 14,435, and then we get the pullback into the 13,250 area. The Nikkei, so we didn't get, just fell short of that resistance area I was watching previously. Uh, we're holding here now at the 29,600 area. As we do, there's a potential for another leg here. Ultimately, I'm looking for a test of this uh, ascending trend line resistance, 31,433. And then I think we see a pullback, certainly to get a test of 
the ascending trend line support, the internal ascending trend line support, 29,200. And below there, we're looking at the, uh, the primary ascending trend line support down to uh, 27,181. Dollar index took out the support at the, at the trend line area that I talked about previously. Now looking for a retest of the lows here at 89.20. From there, I'd expect we get some type of bounce, profit taking bounce potential. And then I think we retest this uh, ascending trend line support, broken support to act as resistance before getting that next leg down to this initial target of the 8750 level on the downside, which is that weekly ABC pattern that I've uh, talked about in previous sessions. The, uh, the, so that's the broader dollar index. The, um, the equal weighted dollar index with the Aussie, Yen, Sterling and the Euro. Uh, look for a move down now to get a test of uh, 11,495 uh, before we might see some type of bounce back into this um, prior support to act as resistance before we head lower here. I think we're heading down to 11,000, uh, sorry, uh, 113.90 is the, um, the next downside objective, which is the um, median line of the channel that we're currently trading in. The yields obviously been exploding higher here. And uh, what I'm watching for now is a test. I think this 150 on an initial test, um, simply because of the psychological level there, will probably provide uh, or potentially provide a profit taking move, um, which you can see the yields then trade back down to test uh, this ascending trend line support at the 130 level um, before moving up to test the projected channel resistance up towards 160 in terms of uh, in terms of the US 10 year yield. Gold, not doing much of anything at the moment, still trapped uh, within this, uh, this area around the 118. As we hold below this 118 yearly pivot, um, then I think we can get the move down that I'm looking for whereby we test uh, the descending trend line support down to 1690. What I'd be watching for is bullish reversal patterns there for long positions. But ultimately, I'm looking for a test of 1653, which is the equality objective versus this swing high. So we just draw this in so you can see exactly what I was talking about. So this. So I think once we get into that area, then we could see a more pronounced correction in terms of gold. Um, so two key areas there that I'm paying attention to are the sending trend line support, 17, just, a, just at 1700, but ultimately I'm looking for 1653 before we can see a more meaningful um, correction in terms of gold. Crude oil. So crude, we're trading back into the top side of the channel where I expect we find resistance here at this $64, $64 a barrel area. Um, the area that is of real interest to me is any pullback into this internal ascending trend line support currently coming in around $58.60. And I think that's the area where I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns, set long positions, ultimately looking for a test now of the projected uh, primary uh, ascending trend line resistance that comes in just above $70. From there, then I think we could see a more meaningful correction in terms of crude oil um, before we mark, look for the next leg higher. But uh, certainly bullish crude oil at the moment, but looking for a pullback to get in on the long side and watching this internal ascending trend line support as the area of interest. Copper. Looking for copper to test a 100% uh, projection of the prior channel that it was trading in here, which would have it up at $4.50. And we've got the weekly R3 coming in at 4.47. So watch for any move back up into uh, this area to, uh, to see for a pullback, whereby we, then what I think we'll do is we'll use this prior ascending trend line resistance as support for the next leg higher in terms of copper. So that currently comes in just over the $4 mark. And uh, I think that will be an opportunity on the long side in terms of copper. Bitcoin, we've got the pullback um, as anticipated from the ascending trend line resistance at the 58,000 level. 
And now, whilst we, whilst we held the uh, ascending trendline support here on a closing basis, we, we pierced it intraday, but on a closing basis, I think we're set for another leg higher. And I think we'll see some volatility, some two-way volatility, as we ultimately look for a test now of this uh, 63,000 level. And then from there, I think we could see a more meaningful correction, um, but certainly bullish above 42,000 now, uh, with the target at the moment for 62,000. Um, is uh, is the view on Bitcoin at the moment. It's interesting as well now that this broadening pattern would play uh, very well here, with this being the top side of the broadening pattern. So it could be that once we get down into this area, then we have another leg uh, to the upside like so. Dolly Wan. <coughs> Again, we traded into that weekly uh, trend line support area at the 640 level. We've held it again. We haven't really had a significant bounce, although we have had a couple of closes outside of the uh, major or the primary descending trend line resistance. So whilst we hold here, I'd be looking for a test of the 650 level. And through there, then we could, uh, we could look for some further consolidation as we try and build out here what would be a inverse head and shoulders scenario before trying to make a more sustained recovery in terms of the dollar yuan. So you want to keep, in, you keep an eye on, on the dollar yuan in terms of it as, a, as an Aussie proxy, really, more than, uh, more than you're likely to be trading it itself. But um, th this is what I anticipate now, some consolidation and a potential for an inverse head and shoulders scenario before moving higher. Dollar yen has traded nicely within this uh, trend channel that we've been tracking. So what I'd be looking for now is a move up into the top side. 106.75 is the level I'd be watching. Bearish reversal patterns there. I think we get another pullback back into the 105.30s as we try and grind higher to ultimately test this major descending trend line resistance towards 109. Swissy has come up into its major... Uh, trend line resistance and we're seeing a bit of supply here. We've also got the weekly projected range resistance at the 9070 level. So what I'd be looking for now would be a close today back through yesterday's low, so 9030 level with an opportunity to play a short down to the 8918 area. And then from there, we'll see if buyers step in strongly, we could be up testing uh, the weekly, uh, sorry, the yearly uh, pivot point 9180. But if we hold the trend line again, then it could be that we roll over and we see a test back into the, uh, the 8870 area. But certainly watching the price action today as we test this major trend line, looking for a rejection as an opportunity to do something on the short side of the Swissy. Dollar CAD has traded into its uh, descending or the internal descending trend line support, which could act as a wedge now for the dollar CAD. So we want to see this hold on a closing basis. So a close back above 124.75, where maybe a bullish reversal to uh, see a squeeze here in terms of the dollar CAD using this, uh, this wedge scenario. However, if we take out this on a closing basis, I think we'll trade the, the 123 is the, uh, is the next target on the downside for the dollar CAD. Singapore dollar. Looking to try and put in a double bottom here. Uh, we've got some, uh, some divergence. So want to see a close back through yesterday's high at 132.33. And then maybe we could, uh, we'd have an opportunity here to play a, a double bottom uh, with an initial uh, 133.89 target uh, in terms of the Singapore dollar. Euro is trading up into that 122.30 resistance. We've got weekly range resistance, 122.39, monthly range resistance, 122.46. And we have an equality objective versus this swing low here at 122.30. And we're seeing a bit of a pause here. We get flipped to the intraday charts. Let's see. So if we uh, if we've got a bearish reversal pattern, a bearish reversal set up here on the four hour back through 129, uh, 129.90s on a closing basis. And that could set up potentially a bit more consolidation in terms of the euro as, uh, as we work our way back to, uh, to test support again, back down to 120.50 before we get this run 
up into the 123.50s. So pay attention to how we trade. This is uh, some decent confident resistance in play here in terms of the, uh, the euro. And uh, I really would only get initially, uh, sorry, would only get excited about further upside imminently on a close through this 122.50 area. So uh, that's certainly, this, this area we're trading at the moment is, uh, is important for the euro and could set up another leg, uh, another leg to test a bit lower. Euro yen, <clears throat> I'm looking now for the euro yen to move up into 130.30. Watch for bearish reversal patterns here. I think we get, uh, we get an opportunity to do something on the short side and uh, maybe get a retest of the prior highs here at uh, 127.30 for looking for the next leg higher in terms of the euro yen. So the level to watch there is 130.30. Euro Swiss has had a bit of a breakout here, and, uh, and now what I'd be watching for is a test of 111.50, which is the projected uh, ascending trend line resistance. Very interesting to see how price responds there. We could, uh, we could then be getting a bit of a pullback in terms of the Euro Swiss back into the um, prior resistance to act as support. So we could be looking at something like this. For, uh, for attempting another leg higher in terms of the Euro Swiss. Similar really in scope and scale to what we saw develop here from the lows. Uh, not be surprised to see that type of move in terms of the Euro Swiss. So watch 111.50. Euro Sterling has made the target area that I've been watching on the weekly chart. So what I'm looking for now is a, a break of this internal channel here to confirm that this, uh, this 86 area is going to act as support uh, for the euro sterling and we can see a recovery um, certainly back up into 88.70 and then maybe uh, see how we trade from there but this was the area that I highlighted last week and we've seen a, a decent bounce from there. Euro Aussie down into the projected descending trend line support and it looks like we're trying to carve out a reversal here so I'd be looking for a close back through the 153.70 level set long positions, certainly looking for a move up into 155.90 is the area I'd be looking at on the, uh, as a target for a long setup. Sterling dollar into the mid, uh, the medium point of the, uh, or the midpoint, sorry, of the channel that it's trading in since the lows back in March last year. And a little bit of supply coming in here but uh, certainly now uh, remain bullish ab above uh, 140 initially would be the area where um, you'd expect buyers to step back in. And ultimately what we'd be driving for would be a test now of this ascending trend line resistance. So this could have us up at trading 147s in terms of sterling. Now, if we don't find support at the 140 area, the next level of interest is going to be back at 137.50 which was the prior resistance area. But even then, that's still an opportunity to, uh, to get in on the long side. Bullish reversal patterns and ultimately we're targeting now a test of this, uh, this ascending trend line resistance for sterling. Sterling yen looking for a test of 151. And I think again from there with sterling yen, if we drive up into there, I think we can see a pullback certainly to test 147 as support before looking for the next leg higher. Let's keep an eye on how we trade here. 151.70 area, this, uh, I think will be an opportunity to play a pullback in terms of Sterling Yen. Sterling Swiss into its uh, channel resistance here. And I'm watching to see if we can get a bearish reversal pattern here as, uh, as an opportunity to do something on the short side in terms of Sterling Swiss. And what I'd be looking for would be a test of this ascending trend line of support, and then maybe an attempt to break out to the upside in terms of sterling Swiss. We really want to see a, a close, certainly back through yesterday's low or back through the, uh, the near term VWAP 127 to encourage the idea that we're going to see, uh, we're going to see a correction here in sterling Swiss. Sterling CAD into its range resistance here. Nice bearish reversal pattern. Let's bring in this trend line here. Let's 
So whilst we hold that trend line support, we can still see a squeeze higher here in terms of sterling CAD. Sterling Kiwi, um, looking for a move back into the ascending trend line support, third test. So looking for 188.50 as an opportunity to do something on the long side, uh, ultimately looking for a move up into the yearly pivot there at 197.50. Aussie trading into the uh, monthly R3 weekly range resistance. So I think we get a pullback here in the Aussie. The pullback should be shallow and I'm looking for um, a move into the 78 level. I'm watching there for uh, bullish reversal patterns as we get back into the trend line support and uh, set long positions. And now what I'm looking for is a test of this, a third test of this sending trend line resistance and a potential leading diagonal to, to end this move. Uh, or, or as an interim uh, pullback level from this, uh, from this just above the 82 level. So the area of interest for me would be long positions from 78 and short positions from 82. Aussie Yen, <clears throat> nothing for me to do in that one at the moment. Aussie CAD, similarly nothing there. Uh, the Aussie Kiwi, we did get, eventually got a rejection from this trend line. But uh, what I've been watching for now, we want to see a, a breach of the 106.80 targeting uh, 105.70. But certainly this 105.70 looks like the opportunity to do something on the long side, retesting the yearly pivot from above, watching for bullish reversal patterns here, set long positions, then targeting up to 109.70. Kiwi has broken out. And now this is the area of interest for me now with the Kiwi uh, just above 75. I think from there we should see some short-term exhaustion in the Kiwi and I'd be looking for a move back to test the 73 level as support and then maybe we build uh, for the next leg of upside. What the ultimate target now for the Kiwi is going to be this ascending trend line. Uh, so we're targeting 79. So watch for pullbacks from the 75, uh, 75.10 area to use the 73 level as support, ultimately then looking for a 79 test. Kiwi Yen, just trading into the uh, weekly R3 here. Um, no signal as such at the moment. But again, similarly with the, the Kiwi, I'm looking for a test now of these, this ascending trend line resistance. Once we see a pullback and find some support, then immediately have a play there. Kiwi CAD, just come up into the monthly range resistance. Potential for a bit of, uh, bit of corrective action here with Kiwi CAD. Move back down in here before we try and uh, build for the next leg of upside. It's a similar story, looking for these ascending trend line resistances to be targeted as we find support um, in these Kiwi pairs. Swiss Yen, this was one of uh, the trades of the week last week for me. Got short against this candle here and picked up 140 pips on the downside. And we've seen a bullish reversal here. Um, what I'd be looking for is whilst we hold this, this uh, support now at the 116 level, looking for uh, 119 on the upside as the next opportunity to do something uh, on the short side in terms of the Kiwi Swiss. CAD Yen, just testing uh, projected ascending trend line resistance, got the weekly R3 above. So I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns here. If we get them, then there's an opportunity, I think, to trade back down into the ascending trend line support at the 82 level before we see uh, another leg to the upside. So those are basically the charts that I'm watching at the moment. Um, there are a bunch of pairs there that you can see that are, are just sitting at or very close to some pivotal levels. As always, what I'm watching for is uh, for bearish or bullish reversal patterns on the four hour or the daily time frame to, uh, to play those levels. Um, so yeah, that uh, that pretty much brings me up to speed, guys. Are there any questions? You can type an N in the chat box if uh, if you don't have a question, just so that I know that uh, we're all on the same page and uh, I can wrap this session up. Another ten seconds here, and um, and we'll close this one out. Okay, well, look, thank you all very much for your time, and I hope this helps, and we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much.